Welcome to Intuitive Art Sales. This is the show where I, Jessica Craddock, am going to teach you how to source your art marketing from within. You're going to practice claiming that authentic art business that you want and leading it the most natural way for you to get there. You're going to learn to get connected to your intuition, your confidence, and your community so that you can sell your art consistently while holding strong boundaries on your work-life balance. I'm here with my lovely friend and I wouldn't call her past client, Mindy McClendon. We've worked together a couple of times in various different formats. She is an abstract intuitive artist from Florida and she is at an exciting place in her business where she feels like she's getting there, she's getting that foothold in the art world and she's starting to build momentum. Isn't that cool? So, Mindy, hi, I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. So, Mindy, let's just jump right in. Let's start with the vision. Where are we aiming toward? What is the future version of your life that we want to create? Tell me a little bit about that. Paint a picture for me. Well, I think when I first decided that I wanted to be an artist full time, I had this vision in my head that I would be in the studio from morning till night, just painting and painting and painting. And that my days would be filled with that kind of thing. And now I realize that there's so much more to being an artist. And while I do love the painting part of it, like that's the, the meat of it all. That's why I do it. I'm starting to recognize how much more there is to yes. promoting yourself and marketing yourself and getting yourself out there and making connections with people and how much fun that could be. So with that being said, my vision has changed. I am doing the painting in the studio for hours on end, but then I'm also recognizing how much more I need to focus on the outside, outside of the studio. And I get hung up on that kind of stuff. But I would like to not only make money off the paintings that I create, but I'd like to make money in other avenues as well. And so I'm considering all those different options that are popping up and wondering which ones I should go for. Okay, well, let's back up a couple steps. First of all, what are the avenues that are popping up that feel the most exciting for you? There's are all kinds of things like i'm curious about nfts and how they work and i've been exploring those i've also talked to a couple of people i've got a gallery that hangs my work and they have a studio in the gallery and they've inquired about teaching classes for the artists that are there so i've considered teaching classes which also segues into online court if that's something i would be interested in see i don't even know if i would have bought it <laughs> but those kinds of things are interesting to me. Okay, so we've got NFTs, galleries, and maybe courses and classes, licensing. You said earlier that you've kind of learned that there's this whole other side to having an art business. And I... Love to say, and we'll say again, if, if you don't want to have an art business, you could still be an artist. That is a-okay. But in your application, you wrote, I want to have and operate an art empire. So I'm going to take you out of that category and throw that out the window. That it's not a thing. If you want an art empire, it is not just the painting that you love. So tell me a little bit more about you said... I've learned I have to make connections, I have to do this, I have to do that. What are the things that you like doing? What gives you the most energy? What, what do you want to do more of that you have experienced thus far as far as getting your work out there? Hmm. I think acting with people face-to-face -face has, been, has been a lot of fun for me. And I get a lot out of that. Even if there's not a sale. Mm -hmm. I get a lot out of that, of talking about my work or even talking about with an artist about their work, you know, back and forth. And people that are interested in the process of it, that's very rewarding to have it speak to someone in a way that they want to know more about it. 
So talking. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would like talking to people about your art? Well, yes, but I've been very scared in the past to do it. I haven't done it enough to where I felt comfortable. I hadn't in the past. And so it was scary because I felt so vulnerable about it. And I, I was scared to put myself out there. But now that I'm not so scared about that, it's a lot of fun. Can we side note here for a second? And I know that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of artists feel the same way that you just described, that scare, that vulnerable. What did you do to switch that? How did you get over that fear to where it became a thing you just said was your favorite thing to do to market your art as opposed to before? I just did it. I just did it. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't have ever done it without your encouragement and without your suggestions, because I feel like just doing it lessened the fear. And yeah. the more I did it, the more comfortable I became doing it. Maybe that's why I was so scared to do it, because I loved it so much. Mm. Huh. I have this theory. And it's proven itself right lots of times. So maybe it's not a theory anymore, but I'm still going to call it a theory. That the thing you're the most scared to do is the thing that you're going to be the best at and love doing the most. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen it over and over and over with clients is the thing that they're really scared of. If I can help them jump in, even though they're scared of it and conquer that fear, it ends up being like the thing that lights them up about their marketing. So just let that be a little ray of hope and sunshine if you're scared to do something. Like okay, that. so what you just described to me was I love doing face-to-face. -face. I love talking about my work. I love talking about their work. I love talking about the whole process. And before that, you said, well, there's all these different ways that I might like to go. NFTs, galleries, courses and classes, and licensing. And this is not necessarily like an end-all be-all, but I'm just looking at for the next step or mm -hmm. the thing that you want towards that art empire. And what aligns really well, face to face, talking about my work, talking about the process is actually the classes. Yeah. You get to talk to people. You get to talk about your work. If they're making work, you get to talk about their work with them and you get to talk about the process that fulfills <laughs> all four things. How yeah, does that feel so for you? Kind of exciting. Can I also point out that you said about the classes? I don't even know if I want to do that. I mean, that seems like, oh, maybe, but it's a, yeah. that tells me, and I wouldn't always say this, but in this case, I feel like there might be a little bit of fear there because it's a thing that you might really, really love doing. I see where you're going with this. I know. <laughs> you know me too well at this point. And I think you might be right. So if, if classes might be the next North Star moment for you, and you said someone had already approached you about doing a class. Right. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about this class situation. That's the gallery where I have my paintings now. They have a studio in the back and it's mostly for throwing clay and pottery, but they also offer classes there. And this, the artists that are represented at the gallery are often the ones that are teaching the classes. Pam is the lady's name, and she's asked me before if I was interested. And I guess I've just kind of, oh, maybe I'll think about it. Or, oh, yeah, that would be fun, but never actually pursued it mm. and, and, and said, yeah, let's talk more about it. So right now we're at kind of a, I know she would let me, but I have kind of blown her off in the past situation. Yes. And I've kind of, I've reached out to her since and, and said, I'm interested in doing classes. And she said, well, we're full till March. This was back in January. And I said, well, I'm, I'm interested in March. 
getting on the schedule. So, and she said, I'll email you and this, that, and the other. And we've talked a couple of times since about other things, but I kind of dropped the ball. I haven't heard from her about getting on the schedule in March. So. Gotcha. So the easiest next step to make this a reality would be. What? Yeah. You tell me. To well, pay out or email her and touch base with her again. I know she's yeah. busy. Sure. So. A lot of people worry about bothering people. And I understand that. It's a real fear. Mm-hmm. However, I am a busy person. And I very much appreciate when people reach out to remind me of things or to check back in or to say, hey, haven't heard from you about this. What do you think? Because otherwise, I might not get to it. It might just end up so far down my to-do list or my email that it's gone. I agree. We all need reminders. (laughs) We all need a little help. Even my mom, who doesn't have a job, who no longer has children or a parent to take care of, like her life is insanely busy. She had been waiting for years for it to slow down and she got the opportunity and nothing slowed down. So like, that's just how we live life now. Go, 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 go. Fill it up with stuff. And I'm not saying that's good or bad or we could go and get into that another day. But my point is, let's reach back out. She may have a process already because she schedules these out in advance already. So she's been doing this for a while. So she may have a process to take you through. Tell me what the class is going to be about. Here's what we pay. Well, it might just be really outlined like that. What I was about to say is more like, let's talk to her about what the gallery wants to get out of the classes, what you want to get out of the classes, how it can be a great exchange for both of you. And is it paid and like all those things. But my gut probably says that's all taken care of. So it doesn't really matter if we ask about that stuff. I think what I would say is, you said Pam? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, Pam, talked to my art business coach and I decided classes are really aligned with the direction that I would like to go next. And I'd love to get on the schedule. I know we talked about it before, but life happens and we all get busy. What is the next step? How can I help? How can I contribute? What do you need from me? Make it as simple as possible for her to help you make that thing a reality for you. Okay. Okay. Once she responds to that, I might still ask, what is the point of the gallery putting on these classes? What are they hoping to get out of this so I can help in the most, so I can do my part as much as possible. Got it. So if they're looking for that artist to bring in their people, maybe then that's where you're like, oh, great. I know a couple of people I can reach out to and make invitations for this class and let them know that I'll be teaching it. If it's that they are just wanting people to get to know you as an artist, um, would you like me to put together like a five or 10 minute presentation at the beginning before I get teaching the classes? Like, what do you need from me so that I can serve you in the best way possible? Okay. Yeah. Because you also said relationships and relationships are a two-way street. So we're not just asking from them, we're giving to them. Not that I think you would just take, take, take. That's not you. But like, how can we very purposefully give back whenever we're asking? Yes. Okay, what's next? We got to get you on the schedule. What is the purpose of this class for you? If you could tell me what do you want to get from it, what would that be? How to teach a class. (laughs) to get over that hump of of teaching a class. I think it would be nice to be able to take those classes to my own studio. For sure. So that is your main goal is to learn how to teach a class with someone else's people. Yeah. And become comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. And you know that you can do that by Nike-ing it. 
Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Because that's worked <laughs> for you in the past. Do they do like an ongoing series of clefts with each artist or is it just a one-off? It's just a one-off. There's some artists that are very seasoned with teaching classes. So they teach acrylic pours classes. And a lot of the, I did talk with Pam kind of about the classes generally. And she said a lot of them, you're not getting artists that are coming in to take classes. You're just getting the people off the street that are looking for an artistic experience or they're looking for a team building thing or sipping wine, sipping paint or whatever. Right. So it was nice to get a feel for what the artists are dealing with. And some of them are for pottery. Some of them are for jewelry making. Some of them are for collage. And I've looked online and looked at all the other classes and what they're charging, how many people are in the class and that kind of thing. And it looks like it's kind of open-ended. I could do it however I wanted to. Yeah. So the next thing to figure out might actually be, what are you going to teach? Because mm -hmm. your artwork is gorgeous, but it's got lots of layers and time and involvement. So do you know mm -hmm. what you would bring? Like what, what would you want mm -hmm. to teach? Don't know. Right. That's what I would have to come up with also, like not the curriculum, but you know, it, like of. you said, what do I want to teach? And Pam had some suggestions. She said a lot of the work on teaching a class is before the class. Like a lot of the artists will bring in canvases that already have the background on them. And then they trace out the shape and tell the people various explicit instructions on how to finish it off. So would I be getting a whole lot of artistic talk back and forth? I don't know. I might just be, she said a lot of it is very basic. Dip your brush in water in between changing colors, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I do think it would still be in an art room, I guess. And I would still be meeting people and talking about my art. So would you want to have like, like the paint and sip model where you have one painting that they copy or because you earlier defined yourself as an abstract intuitive artist, maybe mm -hmm. you want to teach the intuition side of it with yes. some mark making. I don't know. Like I just pulled up your Instagram. It's slash Mindy Smith McClendon, M-I-N-D-Y-S-M-I-T-H-M-C-C-L-E-N-D-O-N, if anyone's curious. I think the thing that I love the most about yours is how there's so many layers to it. And I feel like you want to give them some representation of that in your color choices. Mm -hmm. too. But... What would be a way that, actually, let me back up. Gut response. Do you want them all to be the same or do you want them all to come up with some version of what you totally do? Totally different. I want them you to want, be totally okay. different. Okay. Great. So what if, what if you created an underpainting, like she was saying, Mm -hmm. But it's the same underpainting, essentially, on however many people would come. Let's say 10 panels. Uh -huh. And then you guide them through your process of making decisions and teach them how to take portions out with white and how to use the pencils to... I don't know. What would you say? I it almost wonder it. if it would work better if I break it up into two classes. Like first class, everybody, let's just practice making marks and mm -hmm. making a color palette. And then they put a layer down. And then the next time they come in, then we add more. Because there are so many layers, I would have yeah. to kind of simplify it quite a bit. But sure. almost like two classes would be ideal. If they're beginners, I feel like even creating a color palette might just blow their mind because that's a whole semester yeah. in itself. So what yeah. if you have the color palette, you have the underpainting, and you have 10 different pencils that they can all choose from that are the same that will go with that. And so they don't have to worry about the colors matching. 
No matter what yes. they do, yeah. the colors are going to match, but you teach them how you decide where you think things should go intuitively. How would you describe, like, describe yeah. that to me? If I were in your class, and I know that this is right off the cuff, but we're here, so let's just do it. And I'm looking at, you have a vertical kind of greenish blue painting and there's some things floating around at the bottom. It's mostly greens and purples and yellows. And then the white radiates out into the blue on the top. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. 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 It's called a new light. Should have just said that. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we've got this painting, a new light. Let's say the hard lines weren't there. We just had the white kind of om white to blue ombre effect in the background. Uh-huh. How would you help guide me to make choices? What would you say? How do you do it? Well, I first take the underpainting that I've worked and put layers upon layers. Those are really the, the canvas is covered with all of that. And it looks like a total mess. You can't focus on anything. There's just too much to see. But there's always some spots in that painting or in that mess that look really pretty, that look really cool. So I highlight those by masking out the places around them. And then once I put one layer of mask down, I'll look at that and think, well, what looks really cool in this? And then I decide that I'm going to highlight that spot by masking out around that until I get something that's substantial and looks like an actual ball of thought. <laughs> so what if the class is on masking to find the interesting pieces? the interesting parts in the piece. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if, if it had to be one class, and I don't know that it does, but if it had to be one class and you came in with a mess for them to find the interesting pieces and here's how you mask it and here's the color palette, ready, go. Here's how yeah. I make my decisions. I feel like that would be a great class. Everybody would come up with their own interpretation it couldn't really get screwed up because they've already got something great to look at and they've already got great colors. Yeah. And that simplifies the whole thing. Can... And it would be so cool to see how everyone, everyone's turned out radically different and still in the same class, but come up with something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. You could even have them if like you had extra time or people were waiting for things to dry like stand up and talk about why they chose this or why they chose that to help encourage yeah. each other through the process. Yeah. So you're teaching them to it. talk about their work and masking. Will you come to the class? Love to. <laughs> I really would. That's so fun. I'm actually, just for a little small group of friends, I'm teaching an art, not teaching. I am hosting an art night at my house on Friday. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. I thought so. Okay, so let's see. So we've got reaching out to her. We've got kind of a class outline. What else do you need in order to make this a reality? I don't think you need anything else. I think it's just right, ready go time. But I do want to throw something else out there to think about. Okay. I want you to start making a working document in Google or okay. wherever, I don't care where it is. Essentially, you write out what the class is, a description of it, what they are gonna get out of it, and then like the process you're gonna take them through. Because what you want to do is you want to learn how to teach and bring this back to your own studio to benefit your art business as opposed to just getting paid to be a teacher, which is what I assume they're mm -hmm. going to do. Yeah. In doing so, you're starting to create a process of what it might look like. And that doesn't mean that every class you now teach has to look like this. But if you can start with one and build on it yeah. and make it really good, then you have that class in your repertoire. You can pull it out whenever you want and you've got everything you need to describe it, to market it as you are hosting this class, you can write down the questions that people have so you know to address those before they're even asked in the future. You can okay, write yeah. down things that people say about it, like it felt like this. This was my favorite part. I really loved doing this. I didn't even know I could do that. 
So mm-hmm. almost as a testimonial slash how they describe it. So you're probably not going to go out in the future and say, I'm teaching a masking class where you're going to learn how to find the interesting things in a piece. You're going to learn how they describe it Mm -hmm. and you're going to take their word to then promote it. Okay. So this is just kind of a living document that you can use to bring back and get better and better and better. Okay. Okay. And after having done it, I'll have the Google Doc with all of my data, (laughs) but I'll also have done it. So the fear of the unknown won't be looming over me. Mm -hmm. And you can take pictures during it, put all that in the doc. So you're just creating like an archive of here's the class. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing with classes that I teach for other people's groups. I have a folder where I have different classes that I've taught, the description of them, the bullet points that they get from them, and like my notes that go with it, and a link to a landing page I created around that class. So it's super helpful. So I don't have to create from scratch all the time. Yeah, I can go back and be like, I've got something great for you. Here you go. Done. Yeah, you've created your own custom personal template, really. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this is just idea number one. So you might do this and they say, I love this other thing. I loved taking the marks. I loved mixing the color. I loved whatever that is. You could take that and become your next class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, as you were talking about what you do and teaching your class and making connections with all these people, asking them if they want to connect, whether it's on your Instagram, on your email list, wherever it is. So you can have them as part of your crew now. Yeah. So that's step one. Let's teach the class. <laughs> and I know that is a far cry from Art Empire, but that's how we get to Art Empire is by step one, over and yeah. over and over and over. But also paying attention to stop for a second and align to where we want to go. So that the steps we are taking aren't just random. They're very purposeful and methodical. And here's where I'm going. How do I take my first step toward that? So looking at today, looking at the future, where you want it to be, going that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's where your help has come in. So like it's been vital for me to have someone help me go in that direction. Instead, I tend to get so hyper-focused on one little detail and obsess over that. Meanwhile, everything else is still going on around and I'm not even paying attention to all that. So <laughs> it's nice to have a little help. <laughs> big picture. Yeah, big picture. But you almost have to mm, out-of-body experience it for a second. Get out of my head. Where do, what do I want? Where do I want to go? Yeah. It's not, maybe it's not that easy for everyone. Those two happen to be in my strengths, so it's easier for me to do to help pull that out for you but I think that it's a learnable skill as well I think it's something that you can learn to do if you see it over and over and over and over well thank god because you had to tell me over and over and over again before it sinks (laughs) into my head but when I first started this journey I really I looked at so just as an example I looked at Instagram as if I'm going to be an artist online I need to have Instagram has to be tricked out like it's got to be a certain way but Instagram is just a tool to use and the whole mix with everything else. And it took me a long time to to see it that way. I feel like that's my mission in life. All these different teachers, myself included, are telling you to do different things. Mm-hmm. And it's not that any one person is right or wrong. It's does that align with what you want to be doing? Yeah. So being able to filter through, is this in line with what's giving me the most results, with what's making me the happiest, with where I want to go? And if it does, then great. Listen to that person. And if it doesn't, oh, well, next person. There's never always going to be someone else. Yes. But it's also important to know what that is, to know what it is that you want. Yes. 
taking a minute to step back and look at that. Okay, well, Mindy, this was the most fun conversation. I loved it. I already told people how to find your Instagram. Is there anywhere else where you would like them to go? You can find me on my website at mindymcclendon.com. M-I-N-D-Y-M-C-C-L-E-N-D-O-N.com. Perfect. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. I super appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for your insights too. I'm going to keep you posted on my class. Please do. And yeah. if there's any way for someone to attend virtually, I would love to come. Okay. Okay. I'll keep you posted on that too. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can get new episodes loaded straight onto your phone as soon as they're ready. And if you're one of those people who wants all the things, be sure that I get your email so that I can send you invitations to free classes, send advice your way, and share details about how you can go deeper with me. Just click on the show notes to sign up.